When you have been pouring pain on canvases like me, it's only a matter of time before you wake up one day and realize that you have over 150 canvas pour paintings that are filling your shelves, your walls, and you're like, <coughs> don't worry. In this hopefully satisfying and instructional video, I will show you how to pour paint on other things than canvases like tables, wooden boxes, wine glasses, and I left the best for last, so stay until the end. And away we go! But most of these alternate surfaces will need some prepping before we get to the fun part. The wooden box greatly benefits from having a couple coats of paint or primer or gesso, as that will prevent the thirsty raw wood from absorbing all that paint. Then to make sure you'll actually be able to open the box after the poured paint dries, do take a couple minutes to mask the interior of the sides where they come together. This will make it so much easier to open up the box once the paint is dried. Then give it some feet by sticking four push pins in the corner so the bottom won't stick to the table. And don't worry about the holes in the bottom, you'll pat it with felt to give it a finished look when it's done. Then you pour the paint, and this time I did a flip cup, but pretty much any technique will do. And you'll see the paints that I used for this shortly, and you can find more about the supplies that were used in this video in the description below. But no matter what paint brand I use, I always love to use metallics for my boxes and object pours. Here I'm preparing my Maxi wine glass by wiping it with alcohol to erase any greasy fingerprints that might prevent the paint from sticking. And then I proceed to taping the top of the glass with masking tape. This is a bit fidgety process, but you can get the hang of it. This is because I don't want there to be paint on the rim of the cup where my lips will meet the glass. For the glass, since it's a more shiny surface, I use the full cart multi-surface paint that is meant for glass and ceramics and it has a better adhesion. And I mixed all of my paints to a ratio of one part paint and two parts pouring medium. And I use Floetrol this time, but if you have Liquitex, that will give you a superior result. And here are the paints that I used and observed the consistency, not too thin and not too thick. Looks like I also used Arteza craft paint for the mixture that I made to look like a teal and also the black. Making my cup, I layered the paint as one would to do a ring or a straight pour, and I did a combination of both. to cover any sides that were not covered. And the wet look definitely looks lovely, but it will change a lot as it dries, because the gravity will continue to pull down the paint. Now I had this table that I wanted to experiment with and I got permission to play with, so I primed it with some black paint and did some touch-ups to the thin top layer, which was slightly peeling up. You'll have a much better luck with your own table, especially if you don't have a top layer that wants to come up. And then just go for it. Pour a big cup of paint, then tilt it until you have the coverage that you desire and this might take a few minutes. And make sure that you don't get any dog hair in your paint. That could be a problem. I 
I often get the question, how long do these take to dry? It depends on how porous the surface is. The table took about three to four days to dry the top. The sides were dry. Everything that has a vertical surface will dry within a day or two. But the horizontal surfaces take a bit more because the paint is thicker there. I had this ugly old dog treat bowl that was just an eyesore in my kitchen. It's a family donation and I complacently accepted it. Besides, it's a pretty big dog bowl for my teeny tiny dog. I tried to sand it down as you saw to make the surface more porous, but I soon gave up as it wasn't happening. And here are the paints that I use for the other pores too, some Arteza Metallics and that delicious metallic cobalt blue from Artist Loft that I just can't get enough. <laughs> yeah. All of these Arteza Metallic paints are very nice. The biggest tip that I can give you with acrylic pouring is, I can't stress this enough, just stir those paints really, really well. Give them a good stirring for at least a minute and scrape the sides and scrape the bottom and then give it the drip test and make sure that it makes a teeny tiny mound and then it disappears into the paint. And especially for these crafts, just make sure that your paint are your paints aren't too thin. That would be the problem. For the crafts, rather than for the canvases, I would opt for thicker consistency paints than on a, for a regular pour. So yeah, I feel like I added too much dark paint in my cup and well, you'll see. <laughs> thoughts and let me assure you that I scooped up all that drip paint and I collected it in a cup and used it for my future pores and much of it still retained some color and was still wonderfully metallic and richly complex and oh if it had only dried like that so here's a surface that is much like a canvas but not a canvas and could be very affordable if you shop at thrift stores or already have an excess of records in your possession. Now to prepare the record, you must sand it and then lay down a couple coats of either gesso or paint. As you see, my preferred background is mostly black, <laughs> but you can use any kind of primer color of your choosing. I was going for a yellow gold theme for this, the solar plexus chakra, and I've actually made a whole chakra series of this kind. You can check it out in the cards above at the end of this video. They're all one minute shorts and they're all easy to digest. Then you can hang it as is or attach a clock mechanism on the back and turn it into a cool clock that you can afterwards hang on a wall. And here you can see I just did the agate style pour and you can also add glitter at this point you can resin this if you want and either add some gemstones to it i think it's all up to your imagination to make something out of this and records are really fun way to use your paints if you want an alternative that is very much canvas like but they take so much less space <laughs> And 
then just as I hinted before, the dog treat bowl dried so much darker than I had expected, so I gave it another pour with some lighter colors, and I like it a little better this time. After everything dried and cured for a week or so, I varnished the glass, the table and the bowl with a Liquitex gloss varnish and I laid down two to three coats according to the instructions on the bottle. So here it is. My favorite thing ever to pour paint on is contact paper because not only is it an amazing way to use all kinds of leftover paints, but afterward, you can use said contact paper to create these beautiful journal covers. You can, of course, use any kind of fresh paint if you wish, but this is my usual go-to when I have mismatched colors that I just don't know what to do with. I just do some swipes and the colors are always a bit muted and more toned down. But I actually like that. The technique is a video on its own and stay tuned for that as I record in my process and I will share it with you in one of my following videos. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I post a new video. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like and new videos are coming your way weekly weekly and they might be art or product reviews or unboxing art videos or things of a similar nature and if there is something in particular that you would like me to make a video on please leave me a comment and i'll do my best to make a video for you and which technique did you like best and would you give this a try for yourself and if you feel intimidated by the prospect of having to buy your paints and mix your own pouring medium, there's a really simple solution that you can just buy pre-mixed paints and they're already pre-mixed with a pouring medium, the, uh, usually the Liquitex or something archival, and that'll give you a really nice effect that you don't have to worry about too much investment in these supplies so let me know if you're willing to give these a try and which one did you like best and i'll see you in the next video keep creating my dear friend and trust the flow ttfn tata -ta for now